Today I am brewing a Belgian dark strong ale, also known as a Belgian quad, and I'm also hoping to clear a few things up. My name is Martin Keen. I'm taking the homebrew challenge to brew 99 beers in 99 weeks. Now, funny story about this beer. When I first started this homebrew challenge, I went down the list of BJCP guidelines and figured out what my 99 beers would be, but then sort of somehow forgot exactly which beers I was doing. And I ended up thinking that when I got to this style, Belgian dark strong ale, it would be my last beer. I'm taking the homebrew challenge to brew all 99 beer styles as defined by the BJCP guidelines from American light lager through to Belgian dark strong ale. It is not. But that being said, I am getting close to the end. After this one, I only have 11 more beers until I've done my 99. Now you'll notice the jacket on my claw hammer system. Much like the last two brews, I'm gonna be doing this one as an overnight mash. This is something that you would mash typically low and slow. And when I say slow, I'm not kidding. I am just gonna leave this overnight walk away. And I'm gonna be mashing this one at 148 Fahrenheit or 64 Celsius. I know it's that because uh, finally after, after months of always forgetting and saying, hey Siri, what's 148 Fahrenheit in Celsius? I have finally, at long last, put it on the back of my temperature controller, so I always know. Now I'm gonna be leaving that temperature controller on set to 148 Fahrenheit, and I'm not gonna be recirculating or anything, but that will just keep the mash at that temperature uh, while it mashes overnight. All right, that's it. Ready for its night of a mash rest. Let's go talk about the ingredients. Now, Belgian dark strong ale, let's just go with Belgian quad. It is a beer that is intensely malty, but it's not just a malt bomb. It can have notes of sweetness in it, even, even a bit of a creamy mouthfeel. And it's quite a versatile beer. There's all sorts you can do with this. I've, I've brewed one of these, for example, using oak chips to try and get a bit of that oaky character and a bit of that smoky texture. That's not what I'm going with though in this beer. This time I'm gonna try combining Belgian candy syrup with dark honey. So the original gravity for this beer, shooting for 1091. Yeah, that's pretty high, looking at around a 10 or 11% beer. In terms of my grist, well, two thirds of it, 67%, that is made up of Belgian Pilsner malt. And to that, I'm adding 17% of Munich malt. Then at 3% each, I have aromatic malt and special B. And then into the boil, I'll be adding 5% each of D90, Belgian candy syrup and dark honey. Now let's talk finings. Over the years, I've used kettle finings, things like Whirlflock, which you throw in just with a few minutes left on the boil. I've also used gelatin, which I've put in my fermenters to kind of clear up the beer. But for whatever reason, I just haven't been doing that with most of my beers recently. At least to my taste, I've not been able to taste the difference between a really clear beer that's been fined and just one of my regular, just a touch cloudy beers. They kind of taste the same. But there is a lot to be said just for the visual appearance of a bright beer. So even this beer, even though it's dark, I am planning on adding gelatin into the fermenter just as I'm performing a cold crash. But I've also heard that gelatin can work wonders in a very short period of time in a keg. So I want to do a bit of an experiment. Can, by adding gelatin to this keg of currently unfined beer, can it clear the beer up 
by the time my mash is done tomorrow morning. Well, first of all, let's take a sample of the beer as it is now straight from the keg. This is my Cezanne. I've not even tried this yet. Now, yeah, very typical of my beers. I mean, it's sort of generally clear, but it, it is a little bit cloudy. I can't really see through it too well. So this is the before. The question is when I add gelatin to it and just leave it in here cold for uh, you know half a day, is it gonna be able to clear anything up? Well, I've prepared some gelatin. What I've added is into one quarter a cup of water. I've added one half a tablespoon of gelatin. I put that in the microwave and I kept hitting it with about 15 seconds of nuking in the microwave until it reached about 150 Fahrenheit or 66 Celsius. So now I'm gonna add this into my keg. I'm gonna then just flush this with CO2 and put it back in my fridge. I got a job in the valley, but today I did it go. I need a day, y'all, but the ball says hell no. I'm gonna get drunk and smoke three packs of more rolls. And part of me thinks I ain't ever gonna make it back home. The overnight mash seems to have worked its magic. In terms of hops, well, I'm not straying too far from where I've gone with all of these Abbey Ales, which is not a huge amount of hop character, and the hops that I do add tend to be pretty low alpha acid. In this case, I am using Styrian Golding for everything. So this will go in initially at the start of the boil, aiming for about 25 IBU. And then I'm gonna add in a little bit more right at the end as the aroma hop, just to add a little bit of earthy character to the beer. I got a wife at the house, but she got no love for me. So into the boil I did add my honey and D90 dark Belgian candy syrup. I have transferred, aerated, and I've also taken a little sample of the wort, which I'm gonna use uh, to create a vitality starter. The yeast that I'm using is White Labs WLP 530. This is Abbey Ale yeast. And I'm gonna be fermenting this one at a pretty standard 68 Fahrenheit or 20 Celsius. So how did my overnight gelatin fining go? Well, here's the beer. To give this every chance, I left the keg in place. I didn't move it at all, and I just attached my tap to it. I poured out a pint, discarded that one, assuming that perhaps that one is gonna be more cloudy. And then this is the second pour from that keg. I did keep the beer from yesterday. So yeah, what do you think? Um, possibly not the fairest comparison because actually this one looks more clear now. And I think that's just because it's been sitting out overnight and it's had time to, to settle. Personally, I think it just needs a bit longer in the keg to really take effect. So we got merch. We do. Yeah, so this was kind of really for our own amusement, was to set up a merch store and put the Homebrew Challenge logo on stuff and see what we thought of it. Yeah, it was really about time, like being this far into the challenge and I've been saying, let's get t-shirts. Yeah. And we finally got a t-shirt. 
So we're not trying to uh, make our fortune hawking shirts or anything like that, but we have opened up the store to the public, so you're welcome to have a look. And if you want to get something with the Homebrew Challenge logo on, uh, there's a few options on there. I think you've designed most of the ladies' stuff. Yeah, this is a ladies' uh, sweater, jumper, what have you. Um, I absolutely love this color. Like, it's good. Speaking of color, yes. What do you think of today's beer? Oh, it is very brown. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, okay. Th so the last two Trappist beers, uh -huh. um, the double people said you're drinking in the wrong glass, we're yes. using a gobbler. Mm -hmm. The triple people said your comment was, oh, it's cold. Yeah. And it's not supposed to be cold. Oh, really? It's supposed to serve at kind of cellar temperature. Oh. This one is cold and in the wrong glass. <laughs> so we got we got everything going for this, but it does look like a pretty beer it is very pretty it's very bubbly looking uh it's it's like i said brown um when it's not held up to the light you can still see a little bit through it yep uh all right uh aroma i'm picking up a little bit of maybe fruit maybe sort of darker fruit i could see a dark fruit aroma mm. it tastes like it smells to me. It's got that sweet fruitiness to it, sort mm -hmm. of the dark fruitiness to it. A uh, little bit Christmas pudding in there, maybe. Yeah, I'm trying to. I'm trying to think of what it reminds me of. So to me, I guess like what I'm picking out when I hear you say fruit, and when I tasted that dark fruitness, fruitness uh, would be like a fig, maybe big dates that sort of thing yeah maybe a date i think it's all leading back to christmas pudding again yeah so yeah this is the end of the trappist ales it's been very enjoyable we are pivoting to just something completely different next week as i start historical styles of beer but until then cheers, cheers. <laughs>